There has been a shocking rise in anti-Semitism across the UK over the past two weeks. Louisa, you've got a story to tell about your family and your background. How's it affecting your, your loved ones? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I, um, my, my background is that I am a second-generation Holocaust survivor. My mother um, was a hidden child during the war. And so my whole Jewish identity is based around this intense feeling of never again, never again. And I'm feeling now we are watching it unravel. It's happening again. It's unbelievably... The, so I suppose that there's a sort of simple, you're sitting there simply watching people that you respect, intelligent people, yep. educated, intelligent people who you admire, yep. and um, listening to stuff that's coming out that, 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 that doesn't make sense. And, and, and we as a Jewish community are feeling lost, we're feeling left yep. behind, and we're feeling extremely scared. Joseph, we spoke earlier off yeah. camera about the demonstrations yeah. in London, about the scary scenes. It was scary yeah. for me actually last, last week on, on March or last Wednesday. As a Jewish person, how does that make you feel? So it's terrifying. I have to start by saying the Monday following the massacre, the biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust, there was a celebration, a celebration outside the Israeli embassy by thousands of anti-Israel protesters I couldn't believe that was happening, so I went there just to see it with my own eyes. At the time the Jews were having a vigil and mourning their dead, there was a celebration. And I remember at multiple incidents, uh, inc um, instances where I felt terrified. I'll give you a, one example. I was surrounded by a mob who realized I was Jewish, and they started screaming at me from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, which is a call for the yeah. removal of the... the, yeah. the it's called the genocide. Jewish, it is a genocidal chant. And the police quickly recognised this is like not a good situation. So two police officers came between me and this mob who were screaming for me. And I was then chased into a cafe by a crowd of screaming Islamists, um, so extremists. These are people who support Hamas. This yeah. isn't ordinary Muslims. This is people who support Hamas and are celebrating the, the murder of innocent civilians. They chased me into a shop in a cafe. And when I was in that cafe with a police um, row between me and the mob, a woman came up to me. One of the protesters who was inside the cafe came up to me and said, Oh, are your people dead? Good. Are you people dead? Are you people dead? Oh, good. Good. Are they dead? Oh, good. And it was suddenly a realisation that this is not the country I grew up in. Mm. I come from a working class village up north, yeah. a pit village. Yeah. Um, I used to play in the colliery band. Um, <laughs> and it just... These scenes were just, it's incom incomprehensible that yeah. there were people... So Stephen, this, yeah. is, this is quite chilling. Um, it, it is absolutely chilling. And can I say, you know, what, what you said, you know, about people who are comparatively in intelligent. When I see that article in The Guardian last week about, you know, they should stop weaponizing the Holocaust. Shocking. I mean, what in God's name does that mean? But I'll tell you what really got my goat, Lee. I mean, I actually went along on the Sunday week and the place was full. The socialist workers had their little stall there. Yeah. They, you know, the Revolutionary yeah. Communist Party. Yeah. And the, the lice on the body politics yeah. have come out blinking into the day. They're yeah. actually leeching onto this. I mean, what is it about anti-Semitism? What is it about this, this sort of hatred of the Jews mm. that somehow brings all these people that mm. blinking into the day, like normally keyboard warriors? But you say that, that Stephen. When yeah. we see some of the protests and demonstrations, yeah. the hateful yeah. language yeah. and behaviour in and around London, and it's mostly London, let's be honest, yeah. and sometimes it appears that the police are just stood there doing very little, or they don't know what to do in case they upset the wrong sort of people. Sometimes it's intimidating for them, especially last Wednesday when there's hundreds if not thousands of people against it, just a you know, few, few dozen policemen. You think, you think Khan's got a grip of this? Well, no, I, I think, in all honesty, that what the French have done is the wrong thing. The, the French immediately sent in the CRS, they went in very heavy with tear gas, they started lifting people. All that does is double the number of people. I think what the, the Met have done is they actually lifted about a dozen, I think, last week. Uh, having said that, you know, I'm, I'm not a Jewish person. I cannot imagine... No what it must feel like in, in your heart to actually see a banner that actually prophesies and actually actually proselytizes for the genocide of and, your people. And beyond that, you know, we're but do, seeing... Would you want to see them all arrested for that? Would I want to see them arrested? I would... Yes, I suppose I probably would. I would want to see... 100,000 people? I don't know. It's a difficult question. Yeah. I, you know, you see posters of kidnapped babies. You see posters of kidnapped... Oh, I know, the Hitler people. moustache is drawn the, on. The Hitler moustache, yeah. people ripping posters yeah. off. This is where I would want to see 
action being taken yeah. because this is vandalism. I go even further though because you said the Met have been very good on this. The Met haven't no, been good. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. sorry you, you, they've arrested they've a few people. Yeah, yeah, they've yeah. done something. Yeah, yeah. They only did something because of activists from the Jewish community yeah. and the broader, um, wider um, the community who actually highlight there's a one horrendous scene where there's an Islamist with a, an Al-Qaeda flag screaming the Islamic State while saying may Allah curse the Jews yeah. and the police uninvited um, tweeted under the original video this isn't an ISIS flag fine it isn't it's an Al-Qaeda flag <laughs> They then went on to say, this is just a declaration of faith. Yes, it is. It's the I'm saying it's you, Stephen. I mean, obviously, I've got lots of sympathy, honest, massively, but it's the empathetic, empathetic side that I struggle with, because I'm not a Jewish person. Mm. I, I can't begin to understand. You've got this, this nastiness, this, this evilness from the 20s and 30s embedded in your DNA. It's, it's there with you. It lives with well, you. Well, 20s and 30s goes back to the 12th well, century. Well, it does. It does. Yeah. But, I mean, more recently, that, yeah. that's, that's what you wake up thinking yeah. about. This is living memory yeah. for me. This is my and family. And this is started, yeah. you know... Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not making comparisons to the 1930s, but there were little things that are similar in the 1930s in Germany. I think that this hatred, this you know, this smashing up of shops and you know, crystal nut. Yeah, it's dehumanising a race, isn't it? It's yeah. dehumanising a group of people in order that something so atrocious can happen to them, and the general, normally moral humanity accepts it. But isn't it depressing that you don't see huge numbers of non-Jews on the pro-Israeli demonstration? Absolutely. You see this vast numbers about, of, of, of non-Palestinians, non And let's be fair, Stephen, some of these are coming yeah. from the left. Yeah. These are coming from the yeah. left of politics. Yeah. You know, like you said before, the socialist worker, yeah. the don't, socialist... Don't ask me to defend the, them. The renter mob that seemed to come out on yeah. every single demonstration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't know why they're not at work doing a proper job. All they seem to do is come out each week just, just demonstrating. Now, Joseph, you made a few videos on this, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so one of the, my frustrations with the left is we always expected the left would have our back. The, the left cares about the vulnerable. The left cares about the, the, those that are susceptible to racism. Yet somehow the, the left is very passionate about microaggressions, misgendering people. But the massacre of 1400 Jews, that's not worthy of a protest. That's not worthy of support. And so it's... I think it hurts even more yeah. when it comes from the left because you kind of expect that from Nazis, from extremists, but yeah. not those that are Stephen, Stephen, you're from the left of, yeah. of politics. What would you say to, to Joseph? Well, until that? very, very recently, don't, don't forget, from the foundation of the State of Israel, the Labour Party, you know, the Israeli Labour Party was the dominant force for years, and, and now obviously, you know, Likud yeah. and everything is taken over. Equally, on the left, we had a huge number of really, really famous Jewish MPs, you know, Sidney Bina Barnett, Silverman, you know, people like that, uh, Clinton Davis, great people. There now seems to be something very, very different on the left, and I, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's, it's almost an over-identification with the Palestinians in a way that is actually historically nonsensical. And ultimately, it's demonizing a group of people. Now, I, 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 the, the probably charitably, you can say, well, maybe people are trying to see both sides of the argument. The other thing is, of course, the large number of Muslim MPs, you know, the, large, the way in which the concentration of Muslim voters in constituencies inevitably concentrates the mind. Don't, I don't care what you say. Mm. And I think, in some ways, the fact that the, you know, the, the old Jewish... Uh, vote, which used to be mostly Leeds, Manchester and, and Golders Green, it is now much, much more spread out. I mean, mm. certainly it's, you know, it's in Hertfordshire and places like that. So, so Louisa, so. Um, I'm a member of Parliament. Mm. Um, I stand with Israel um, mm -hmm. firmly, as do all of my colleagues. What would you say to our government at the moment? You know, I, I, I watched Kemi's speech yep. yesterday, which I thought was absolutely brilliant, yep. where she, she gave this, impre this, this, this impression of, of the UK as being a, a, a place where we should be free to, yeah. to, to, to practice whatever we want in our religion. It should be a safe it space, be a safe space. happy place. And I, exactly. I, th I feel a lot, of, a lot of work that I feel very passionately about is about Holocaust education. And I think that it goes back, I keep going back to sort of, yeah. you know, previous Holocaust of... of education yeah. and I think that you know you were talking earlier about your trip to Israel yep. I think people need to understand the mm. history I, I feel I feel nervous coming and talking in environments like this because I'm not a political commentator no, no. I'm not somebody who wants to comment on the deeply nuanced 
um, political situation yeah. in the Middle East. But there is no question that when you sit and you watch, and now because of social media, we are watching it as it happens, yeah. the massacre of babies, of women being raped, it is beyond imagination. It, it makes you question humanity. And I think that we have to go back to educating people so people have an argument that is based on truth. Stephen, mm -hmm. Louisa says we've got to question humanity. I think I, I agree with her. I agree. I think what, what the, this President Hamas have done is they, they've kind of um, sort of out Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is just beyond horrific. But I mean, I, I think the, the point about actually banning the demonstrations or moving to it, I think um, Mr. Justice Sedley famous said um, you know, that the freedom to speak um, inoffensively is no freedom at all. I mean, you know, we should actually cherish the rights of people to speak offensively. But there has to be a, a cut-off point, a point when you start talking about, you know, the river to the sea and all that business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think we should be doing I think Kemi Badenoch spoke quite well, but Jeez, I think Keir Starmer has spoken pretty I well. I think, Joseph, so. if we're going to come to you, I'll give you the final word on this, because um, I know you're deeply upset over the yeah. current situation. Um, you're a, Ju a Jewish person. You're not ashamed of your, of your background, your culture, your family. You're quite happy to promote it as well. You know, you need to, I think you need to carry on what you're doing uh, and don't be ashamed of, of your background because you're, you're a brave man and, as, and Louise is a, a brave lady. But what would you say to people out there, especially government that's watching? So, so two things. Um, I've, my family's lived in this country for centuries yeah. and I no longer feel safe here. And that's deeply, deeply concerning. I think the police and the government are completely out of their depth. I've seen videos of... Islamists screaming genocidal chants to Jews in front of the police and the police being unable to recognise it. To, 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 to come to your point about protest, I don't think the government would allow a Nazi protest to come through the streets with people waving swastikas and we have to treat some of these flags and these people with that same mentality. This is a genocidal ideology okay. and it has no place in the UK. And if it, dis if it does have a place in the UK, then the Jewish community have no place in the so UK. Where, where in the world would you feel safe? Um, I failed safe in Israel, um, which is yeah. it's hard for people to believe, but at yeah. least no, there no, I no, know no, the state has my back. We could talk about that. Israel, right. that is, uh, thanks for coming in, Louisa. Thanks, Joseph. Thanks, Stephen. But